Let's make a diggy diggy hole and let's find a custom ore generation in our Minecraft mod. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found some back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we're adding a custom ore generation to our project right here. And of course, for this, quite importantly, you will have to have gone through the previous tutorial where we added the bio modifiers, the configured features and the placed features classes and basically set up the world gen. So do keep that in mind. Go ahead there or alternatively, you can also go to the description below in the, to the GitHub repository and check out all the code that you might need. Now, what you will also find in the description is timestamps and those timestamps might be interesting because we will add custom end or and a custom nether or over here. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker and you will also find the code of course in the github repository but basically because i want to add both of them as well because well we're also going to add end or generation and nether or generation absolutely freaking fantastic but for this of course first of all we need everything that is well a custom custom blocks added right custom nether and custom end ors. So the first thing here is, of course, registering them and then adding them right here. I'm just going to, like I said, copy over the contents that we need here, right? The end or basically dropping end or and the nether or dropping end or or nether or sorry, the nether or dropping nether or and the end or dropping end or. There you go. And then, of course, otherwise raw Alexandrite with a couple of different numbers. Now, those numbers, you can always change those up however you would like. And then, of course, here it is as easy as using the block with item. This is going to be for the nether ore as well as the end ore. And then that would be that. And I think that that's actually all of the data gen that we need. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First of all, the translation and then, of course, the textures, which will also be available to you down below if you choose to also add nether and or end ores. Yes, that is actually the way to say, wow, that is a crazy sentence to say. Has this ever been said? I don't know. It has now, so there you go. <laughs> well, anyway, that's going to be the textures, that's going to be the lang, that's going to be the data gen, and then now we can proceed to actually add the proper world gen stuff, the ore generation, which starts off, of course, with a configured feature because, well, we need to define how this is going to look like. I'm going to do a quick overview of this again. So we're going to have a configured feature. This is going to then be turned into a placed feature which then will be turned into a biome modifier idea here being the configured feature is how is this going to look like right we want to add a feature into the world how is it going to look like so let's say how many different ore blocks are we going to place as a general idea then the place feature is like how is this going to be placed right at what y level is this going to be placed how many of them are going to be placed things like that and then the bio modification or bio modifier here is then going to say hey how, where is this going to be placed basically in what biomes so with that we can start off with a public static final resource key of type configured feature of type question mark comma question mark this is going to be the overworld underscore alexandrite underscore or underscore key equal to of course the register key method i want to call this the alexandrite underscore or in this case we can then duplicate this twice and change this to well first of all the nether one and of course very importantly that we also change the name inside of the register key method call otherwise we will run into some issues so i'm gonna have that and then this is gonna be the end alexandrite or and there we freaking go having added all three of these resource keys we can then well first of all get a couple of things inside of the bootstrap method that we're going to need because the way that this is going to work is when we have a feature in this case for or features we need to define okay which blocks can we replace for our ors meaning obviously when we or like basically let's think about this if we have the little deep state or sure and let's say we have the normal or Right? Obviously, this one here is embedded in stone, while this one is embedded in deep slate, meaning that this will only replace deep slate and this should only ever replace stone. So that is a rule test that we need to define. Now, in our case, I'm going to copy over the four rule tests that I've already prepared over here. You can see stone replaceables, deep slate replaceables, netherrack replaceables, as well as the end replaceables. You can see those are different matches, right? A tag match test basically saying, hey, anything in this tag over here that could be replaced with my stone alexandrite ore verse and then of course here the deep state ore replaceables that would be then 
what can be replaced by the deep slate alexandrite ore and so on and so forth. That's the whole idea. And then the next thing we're going to need is a ore configuration of target. Now, the way that this is going to work is quite interesting indeed. So basically, we're just going to have a basic list. I'm going to show this. I also copy it over over here. So this is the overworld alexandrite ores. Basically, as you can see, this is just a list of ore configuration targets. First, using the stone replaceables over here as a rule test. And the thing that can be or that can replace the stone replaceables is the alexandrite ore. And for the deep state replaceables, the alexandrite deep state ore is the thing that can replace those. Fairly straightforward, hopefully somewhat understandable. And then we're finally going to register this. And with the register call, this is actually the thing that we're going to turn into a JSON file. So the first parameter here is the context. Then we always put in the resource key. In this case, the overworld alexandrite ore key. Then we have to define what type of feature it is. In this case, it is an ore feature, right? Obviously, because that's what we have. Now, when we have an ore feature, well, we are making a configured feature. So, of course, what we need to do is we need to make a, an ore configuration because that is the way that we configure this feature. And we configure this with the overworld alexandrite ores list as well as a size. In our case, we're just going to choose size 9. This is going to be the vein size. So how many different blocks here are set down in one vein? That's the idea. And we can basically duplicate this twice. Every time you duplicate something, keep in mind that we, first of all, change the key to nether alexandrite ore. And instead of using the list right here, we're simply going to pass in the nether replaceables and then pass in the block state. So mod blocks dot alexandra nether or dot get that default block state so keep that in mind the same thing of course then goes with the other one we first change the key so this is the end alexandra or key and then instead of the list once again we want to pass in the end replaceables and then pass in mod blocks dot alexandra end or dot get that default block state double triple quadruple check all of the things that you have written you can also always hover over the different keys and stuff like that and you basically are going to be able to see how often you've used them and where you're using them right that is a very good like immediate sort of indicator visual indicator on if you have not changed it in one way or another right so because if you haven't changed it in a couple of these then of course you might run into severe issues with the mod configured features class now done these three lines will basically already generate us the configured feature however we now have defined how this is going to look like however where are they go or how is it going to be placed well that is a thing of the placed features now for this we will need a method or rather a class th with three methods that i'm going to copy over this is of course also available to you down below and the reason why we have to copy this over or basically make this our own is because if we press shift twice and go on to the or i believe it is the or placements class let's take a look yes or placements we can actually see that these three methods are exactly the same methods that are exist that exist right here and of course here the or placements class is the class where you have all of the or placed features right so be it or copper, or copper large, redstone, redstone lower, things like that. And we can basically see everything right here. I cannot recommend enough to take a look at the entire, like the source code for this, for the placed feature, for the for the configured feature, for anything that you might want, right? Literally just control left click on world gen over here and you have everything in here. You see the features, the, there are end features, there's cave features. How do nether features work? How do tree features work? You can take a look at literally everything. Anything that you might desire over here, I cannot recommend this enough to basically take a look at the source code is one of the, if not the best resource you have available for modding. Now with this copied over, we can then move on to the placed features over here. Where? Well, this is going to be quite interesting indeed because first and foremost, we once again need three resource keys. So public static final resource key, this time of type placed feature. It's going to be the Alexan, Alexandrite underscore or underscore place underscore key equal to once again the register key method with Alexandrite underscore or underscore placed. I like to add a placed over here whenever I have a placed feature. This is not strictly necessary. You can, of course, you could, I mean, in theory, you could name it like this. However, of course, you want to name it something that makes sense. Duplicating this twice, we can then add the nether alexandrite or right here, as well as right here, nether underscore alexandrite underscore or underscore placed. What a crazy name. And then here, the end or, and then here, the same thing. 
Having added the three resource keys, we can now go on to the bootstrap method, where, of course, we have the configured feature var variable right here, which we're going to need to refer back, right? We went, once again, I want to reiterate this one more time, CF to PF to, what is it? Exactly, BM, right? So it's always going to th go this way. So now we're going to register, not register a key, but register, first of all, passing in the context, then passing in the Alexandrite or placed key. And then we want to refer back to a configured feature. This is the configured feature we now want to place down into the world somehow. Configured features dot get or throw mod configured features dot overworld Alexandroid or key. And that is it. After the first closing parenthesis, we now need a list of placement modifiers. The way that this is going to work is we're going to say mod or placement dot and we're going to choose the common or placement with a count of 12 and then a comma after the 12. And this is going to be quite interesting. This is going to be a height range placement. I'm going to completely uh, write this out and then explain this. Uniform, we are going to have a vertical anchor of an absolute value of, let's say, minus 64. And then another vertical anchor, which is going to be an absolute value of 80. And then passing the, or then ending it with a semicolon. And there we go. I might say, what the frig is this? Well, we're going to choose a common or placement with about 12 veins per chunk. Once again, this is a rough estimation of this number, but that's the whole idea. And then a height range placement, because of course we need to know at what Y level should we place down these ores. And there are two main ways that we can do this, either with a triangle or a uniform distribution. Now this distribution works in the following way. You define the low point and the high point. And then if you have a uniform distribution, well, then basically you have, let's say, between 64 and 80, there are 144 different Y levels. And then if, if you are placing down 12, you know, 12 of them in one slice, then in theory, you would have, what is that, uh, 12 divided by 144. So you have about an 8.3% chance equally in each, at each Y level to set down one of the different uh, placed features. Yes. Now, this is great. What about triangle? The triangle is very interesting because that way that actually works where you have the lowest chances at the specified Y levels right here. So minus 64 and plus 80 would be the lowest chances. And then you draw a simple triangle and at the very middle. So basically between the two, which would be, I believe, 16, right? So if we were to have minus 64, minus 64 plus 80, then 16 would be the middle point between them. That would then be the highest likelihood of where the where this would spawn. And it would be quite significantly higher in terms of the probability. This is really cool. Now, you can, of course, also go into the height range placement class. And you can see you can also use a height provider where there are a couple of different ones biased towards bottom, very high biased towards bottom. The trapezoid is the same as the triangle over here. The uniform is the same as the uniform, then you can do a weighted list and a constant height. So there is a couple of different things. You could also, in theory, do your own height, you know, height placement over here. Height provider absolutely would work. But of course, this is way past our video. We are using the triangle one here. We're going to use the uniform and that's going to be totally fine, right? So let's use the uniform over here. That's going to be okay. And we can then copy this over again two times, which, of course, very importantly, we then want to, first of all, change the key to the nether key then change the overworld to the nether over here, very importantly, and the rest we can, in theory, keep. Of course, the numbers, you can always change those. That is totally up to you. With the third one, end Alexandroid ore, and here, end Alexandroid ore key as well. And now we have three of our ores, basically, well, as placed features. Awesome. And now the last step is going to be the mo biome modifiers over here, where, of course, the first thing is going to be resource keys. So public static final resource key of type biome modifier. This is the add underscore alexandrite underscore or equal to the register key method add underscore alexandrite underscore or. There we go. Duplicate this twice. And of course, nether alexandrite or nether alexandrite or. And then here we have the end. And here we have the end. There we go. So having added the three resource keys again, we can then actually register this. This it lo looks a little bit different, but it's almost going to be the same. Context that register then passing in the key, so add Alexandra or, and then we need to make a new forge bio modifier. Now, in this case, we're going to choose the add features. You can also add spawns. You can remove features or you can remove spawns. Now, in our case, we want to add something. And the way that this is going to work is it's going to look like this. 
let's say in terms of the Alexandroid or what I actually want is I want to say biomes dot get or throw biome tags biome tags dot is overworld a second parameter is going to be a holder set dot direct passing in the placed features var dot get or throw not get but get or throw mod placed features dot let's say the Alexandroid or placed key exactly and then this is under the underground ores generation step and with this we have the biome modifier done let's uh, just duplicate this two times and of course once again changing the different things not to nether biomes but actually to the add nether alexandroid or here of course the biome is going to be is underscore nether and the placed feature is once again changed to nether alexandroid or placed key very importantly and then at the very end over here of course we also do the end and that is going to be in at is end and then here also the end or key double check that you have changed all of them if you duplicate them it is very easy when you do duplicate something or copy something over that you forget to change something there if you don't want to use a tag but rather would use individual biomes you can absolutely do this instead of biomes get or throw you want to do holder set dot direct passing in biomes dot get or throw and let's say for example biomes dot planes and then afterwards you can then also say let's say biomes get or throw uh, i don't even know biomes dot uh, it doesn't really matter. Basalt deltas, for example, something like that. That absolutely works. Now, basalt deltas doesn't make a lot of sense because that is not in the overworld. So let's do the bamboo jungle for the sake of argument. And yeah, that is basically individual ones. I'll just keep this here, but comment it out. I think that that's going to be fine. This is individual biomes, right? So you have an example on that very straightforwardly, though that is fine. And will you believe it or not? This is everything that we're going to need here in this case. So what we can do is simply go up here and run the data gen, which will, you will then find is going to generate under our data tutorial mod folder is then going to generate us the world gen folder. In just a second, you will see, I think we get like 17 different JSON files. There we go, 17 JSON files. And you will find, first of all, the three configured features. And we have the three place features. And we also have the three bio modifiers over here under tutorial mod, forge bio modifier. And there we go. Of course, you are free to also make those JSON files manually. Then you just have to change them. Now, now the bio modifiers are fairly straightforward. The configured features, depending on how they look like, they can be, you know, semi-complicated. Same with the placed features. But that is all of the things that we need. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. Of course, we're going to need to make a new world for this as we're dealing with data gen or rather world gen. And if you do this, you will get this experimental features thing. There is no way around that. Just click yes. And every time you go back into the world, you will also sadly get that. That is simply going to be a thing that you just can ignore and just say yes. And then we're going to be fine. But this night vision, well, we're going to get ourselves some night vision over here. And then oh, we're going to get on hunting some ores. Now, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to find those Pretty freaking fast. Look at this. I mean, there's already ores right here. Alexandroid deep state ore. Let's see. I mean, look at this. There's even more right here. Awesome. And in the nether. Well, here it can sometimes take just a little bit longer simply because of the way that the nether generation works. Also, if you spawn in the basalt deltas, whereas the custom ores can only replace netherrack, well, then, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna fly a little bit, but maybe... And there we have it. Look at this. There are some ores right here. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And in the end, we found ourselves in the end. And of course, this one is usually the easiest. There we freaking go. We even can see them right here in a random part of the map. And in the main island, we should also see them, you know, strewn about somewhere. Of course, when it comes to how often they occur, things like that, that is all a thing in terms of the numbers and the numbers you can always change for your own for your own mod and for your own balancing. But well, that's going to be custom or generation added to Minecraft. Freaking awesome. And that's going to be for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about a custom tree. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.